what's up. So, you know, last time, I, uh, small D. last time I posted uh, was on my land talking about how people can buy some land for having a place to go off grid, get out of the city because uh, of the contagion type of risk or whatever. But I waited for an update and pretty much what I was saying kind of turned out to be pretty true that this is kind of the epicenter in Silicon Valley. And uh, this is a place where people have to pair actually a lot or, you know, find a plan. And uh, it's usually not good to go somewhere else, but uh, the recommendation I've seen is like people have to find shelter, like, you know, if they don't have a home, but if they have a home, they have to be like, it's gonna be illegal from tonight at midnight. So I just, uh, I'm lucky cause I posted some stuff about finding a place and uh, I ended up, you know, getting taken in kind of for like getting good deal on rent, a place I can have my dogs and cats, cat and ducks and chicken. And uh, so, you know, I'm pretty happy about that. I'm lucky. Uh, but basically, it's kind of messed up. They just say if you're homeless, you have to just find shelter, but there's not really that much. Uh, so that kind of sucks. There still needs to be more done, but I do support this, like making it not allowed to go out because I've noticed nobody's really following that much. I mean, people just want to have fun and just live their best life and stuff. And so, it's important to be serious and clear-headed about it and so I'm like thinking a lot about this curfew from tonight at midnight it's coming up in less than an hour so I'm counting down I'm heading home because I'm gonna be inside before midnight uh, and then I can only leave for essential travel stuff like that so I'm thinking I'm gonna go to uh, that land I mean because it's kind of hard to find a place here I mean I have a place now but uh, I'm trying to find a place for my mom I'm picking her up from the airport so I'm helping take care of family and then uh, you know that'll be my like essential travel need and uh, then I'm gonna be back to this place I'm staying now and uh, Silicon Valley area so I just am still doing the land project I want that to be clear because the land is still a project it's going it's kind of delayed now there's not that much funding but uh, anytime anybody wants to be an investor in that land I'm definitely able to go out there and uh, start setting stuff up, building the fence, you know, reinforcing that place, because it is a perfectly good place to, you know, weather out some kind of thing like this. Uh, it's easier if you have a good house or something, but all the paranoia that people have of being around a lot of people, you don't have that when you're just in a place where there's not as many people, you're more in nature. So that's why it just seems like if people are trying to do self-isolation, it could be good to sort of just find some place in you know national parks are being used so uh i think it's i'm proud that's the point i made this video because i'm happy that the city is cracking down on people just going out randomly and uh i've only been out because i have just not really had a proper place to stay so i've kind of been trying to figure out trying to see if there's any way to form like a coalition of people who also need housing so I've been working on that we've got like a camp in Palo Alto and I mean I've been trying to help support some just people that are unhoused just like uh, the projects I've been looking up to like uh, uh, the village in Oakland which is really cool like building tiny homes and I have a long way to go there. I haven't had too much project progress, but I did like get a blind guy into housing. The guy Dustin, I posted about that a little bit when I first got back to the States, like 2019, 2018, I was doing that project. We got that guy into housing and uh, 
first it started through getting uh, a shuttle bus converted into a home and then that home was like moving around to some different places and uh, I had a box truck too at that time and yeah a lot of housing experiments so I'm gonna keep doing housing experiments that's like I'm kind of enjoying some of this uh, crisis because I've been trying to develop the skills to be like survival and off grade and kind of uh, be able to just do things in a natural way without uh, needing things from you know doing things off grid and homesteading and stuff because a lot of hippie people in the traveler trail like a lot of people have been talking about how society is unbalanced and it's gonna kind of crash and stuff so and I always saw too that Asia the way that Asia is rising like they kind of are easily going to have more power than america and western countries are not like uh, set up to be in power for as long as like the more modern new civilizations that have risen in asia which are like doing a lot more i don't know just development and business and uh i feel like Asia has a much better handle on this virus. Like, uh, they have a lot of hospitals there and it's a good place to go for medical stuff. And they just have a lot of training and good skill there. So uh, they have a really strong society. And it's like, you can kind of tell when you travel a lot, like the Western system of really big wealth imbalance and a lot of hardworking people and without that much money, like, it's not a balanced system and it can't last that long if it's all based on cheap stuff from China and all these supply problems. So in place of an uh, unbalanced system, something can come that's a lot more, uh, you know, just like balanced and fair, fair trade and just kind of not all based capitalists and based on money, like more based on skill and different you know, being able to trade and being able to survive in communities a little bit. Like, so, yeah, like the whole self-isolation thing, I mean, people definitely need to form groups still, like figure out how they're gonna help each other out for stuff. So that's why I've been trying to hit people up that I know as best I can, just try to reassure people that everything's chill because, uh, you know, I've been always seeing that the youth generation needs to rise into power somehow and the older generation have had their good run for themselves and they a lot of times don't really care that much about the future so it's like uh it's been a long time coming that like younger generation just gets to fill some of the positions because of power because younger generation isn't as like uh into some of these politics of, you know, religion, like anger and aggression, that's kind of more traditional old school. So it's kind of good for people to, I don't know, just respect Asian system, look and see how they do things. Cause there's a lot of schools everywhere, a lot of hospitals and easy access to that. Food is cheap and people grow their own food you know, they know how to live sustainably and Americans don't live sustainably or Europeans like, or Canadians or Australians. I mean, there's a lot of cheap labor there and illegal labor. And so it's kind of messed up. Like it's kind of using certain people to help other people get rich. That's so just like third world countries. And since I've been living a lot in Asia, that's why I feel really prepared for this type of economic crisis because it basically just feels like I'm in an underdeveloped country that has economic issues and some less access to supplies or something like it just, it feels pretty normal uh, having lived in some pretty poor places that uh, where people struggle and just basically live without that much and try to get by no matter what and, and help each other as a community think about the group and so it sucks to see yeah like people sometimes the younger generation though they don't really care i guess about this quarantine stuff they're not uh following the directions and 
that's why I made this video. I just want to commend the uh, the response to make more rules about going out because that's like really serious and people have to like figure out something and stay in their house and chill like they've got Netflix and they've got all this internet so I don't know it's just uh I got lost for a bit because I haven't been in this area too much. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I've uh, wanted to post about the whole COVID-19, but I've just seen everyone's posting about it. So I've just been, I originally had been saying I'm selling that land because I really thought it's a good place to spend a thousand bucks or two, thousand, three thousand and put a little cab in there and have fireplace different heating sources different toilet options and i mean there's so much stuff that really doesn't cost anything you can get a porta potty rental and so uh it's just hella easy to do off-grid i mean and off-grid just means any kind of house that you just make yourself quickly and i have my land and it's I was saying I'm selling it, but, you know, it's also people can come for free and test it out and, you know, they don't have to pay me money to do a project there. That's the thing. I want to do an eco village. So the last video I made was about the eco village and this video also is because the reason I'm giving recommendations on the coronavirus is because I've been following it and talking to some people about it. and. I feel like uh, it is a serious thing. I've been saying from the beginning until it's serious. And uh, so, yeah, I'm taking it seriously and I'm going home. I have 20 minutes before midnight, before I'm not allowed to just be out randomly. That's why I just went for a little drive, just kind of get it out of my system, you know? not interacting with anyone I'm just kind of I like to get her out and drive so but you know there's a lot to say about this and uh, a lot of artists are kind of excited about the prospect of staying inside because they can edit their and create their content and their work I can edit video and chill and work on my book I'm definitely gonna write about all the crazy stuff that was going on and uh, just I kind of didn't get to really explain that I was making a documentary and after everything just changed in Nepal it's been kind of new but I tried to just jump into rebuilding what got messed up in Nepal like just replacing it building it in uh, making it here in America you know like I had multiple farms and properties and buildings that I had made in Nepal so I've got some different properties here like that I'm working on they're pretty far away from but they're in California and there's one in the hot climate in Southern California five acres and two acres in the Siskiyou County and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with that but I, I'm making like payments on it you know it's not like I've paid it off yet but it's not that long of a terms you know and it's not that big of a payment and so that's why if even one person is buying a parcel or something then that's basically paying for the payment and uh it's like uh getting a mortgage and renting out the rooms or something while you pay the mortgage so it's just uh kind of yeah how i want to how i intend to fund the land and it doesn't have to happen fast but the sooner people come and do anything there, uh, I feel like it'll raise the value just by getting things set up. So that's why in this, you know, messed up time, like all my prepara preparation, it hasn't been for like guarding off or anything. I'm not, I don't have like any weapons or anything. Like I had like a BB gun that got stolen, like, and I have, you know, that's it. Like I'm not 
I'm not an aggressive person, but I'm inviting other people. If you want to be like a guard, that's good. You know, we need like divisional labor, but I'm trying to gather people together for sure for like some kind of uh, alternative community, alternative society that doesn't depend on uh, things from the government as much. I mean, we can still, I'm not saying we're going to leave the American country and try to be our own country. It's just like a independent community, an independent, sustainable eco village, you know, like it's a model village. It's a place for people to visit. And in this kind of time, like people could go there and people have compromised health or whatever. Like it's a safe place to breathe fresh air and stuff. And so, um, so yeah, <clears throat> you know, it's there and I'm like not really planning to be out there too much because it's pretty cold and I want to make money being down here and I was living out there but it's just kind of hard like there's it's windy and <coughs> yeah. I guess I can't talk anymore because I've been talking and I gotta get unlost and uh, anyway it's just uh, important to take this stuff seriously, and I'm going to be back inside by midnight, within 15 minutes. That's why I'm counting down. <clears throat> it feels like the purge, but whatever, but, you know, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's unsettling, like, seeing the grocery store is empty, but, you know, it's, uh, the West is used to too many luxuries and everything being close at hand and it's just shipped and I don't know, it's it's messed up, but these crises, crises make people figure out better ways to do things and so I believe in that Mark Zuckerberg concept of fail fast and move fast and break things and apologize later or fix it later or, you know, retroactively fix things like that's innovation because that means you're just going forward and jumping over whatever is set up to try to stop kind of progress of doing new things uh, and just doing things better than however they're being done at the moment whether it's for a profit or whether it's for just your own sustainability your own independence and so yeah, I've always been about this like alternative community, building community, building villages. And that's because if society ever gets falls apart, it's like you have a backup, you have a way to rebuild and just start over and you need a fresh clean slate. So if things get shaken up, that that's when it's a chance to, you know, innovate and try new things and test just solutions and it's uh, it's scary and I'm not like trying to downplay it or anything because I'm all about following it seriously. But it's like, uh, it's a hard situation because I've been trying to advocate for the homeless people. Like they're not, uh, they're not being represented. Like they're being mentioned, but there's actually no like new services. There's still like the people in the camp that I've been kind of trying to start just stashing some of my random like clothes and stuff there on like an air duct checking on a guy who just sleeps there and give him food sometimes I gave him a stove once I got the place for me to stay I just wanted to give him a stove because I didn't feel like I needed it but now maybe going up north but no I don't really need it because I'm going up to a house also I'm fortunate actually I'm one of the ones luckily that got uh, you know able to be able to have a place to go before midnight so anyway I hope everybody just stays inside and keeps a good attitude because uh, it's messed up what's happening but there's a lot of smart people and institutions that definitely can do the right thing and get things under control and I think uh, I've been following it hella closely and I think the testing is about to start pretty soon and so anyway that's uh yeah that's it like 
anyway, <laughs> you know, yeah, if the testing starts, it'll all be chill.